Hi, I'm Sue. Thank you for joining me for today's Bible reading for September 17th. Today's Bible reading is from Daniel 7 through 9. And just by way of a quick review for these three chapters that we're going to read, um, these are going to go into Daniel's three visions. In chapter 7, which according to Bible Project, and let me stop and say there are two, there's, there are two, there's a lot of links, but there's two links in the description of this video for an introduction, introductory overview of Daniel. So I suggest you get them and listen to them. And But one of them is Bible Project. And um, according to Bible Project, this chapter 7 pairs with chapter 2. Because in chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And now here we have Daniel's first dream. And in this dream, uh, he doesn't know how to interpret that, which is interesting because he already interpreted for the king. But now he has to have an angel come and explain to him the meaning of his dreams, which are future uh, future prophecies. So in chapter 7, we have four beasts that show up. And they represent arrogant empires. This is all according to um, a little blurb that I got off of Bible Project's overview. And one of those four beasts is a super beast. And it also talks about God's throne being established. Now, Bible Project made an interesting kind of little outline of this book of Daniel, where there's the two visions from uh, two visions in that you have the king has visions and then Daniel has visions. Now, Daniel has more than one, but the two I should have I should have said the two people that had the visions. And then you have three trials. You have, you know, when they were taken captive from Babylon, then you have the fiery furnace, and then you have the lion's den. And then you have two kings that were severely dealt with. And we saw that yesterday with Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar being judged by God because of their arrogance. And I should say being humbled by God because of their arrogance. So chapter seven, again, we're going to see Daniel's, Daniel's first dream. Chapter eight is Daniel's second vision. And in this one, we're going to see uh, a ram and a goat. The ram representing Medio Persia and the goat representing the Greek Empire. And this goat has horns, one of which becomes an evil, uh, well, stands out, um, representing an evil king of chapter seven, that super beast that I just talked about in chapter seven. And chapter nine is Daniel's prayer. So what he did was, or what he's going to do when we read it in a minute, he references the scroll of Jeremiah, which is interesting because Jeremiah is a contemporary of his. And I think Jeremiah was younger than him. And I've said this before, but during this time, roughly, okay, roughly during this time, during the exile, you had Daniel up in the administrative offices of Babylon. You had Ezekiel prophesying to the people. I always picture him kind of like a tent city. You know, they were exiles. They were slaves. And um, Ezekiel, who was supposed to be a priest, never got to be a priest, but then got called as a prophet from God to the people and prophesied to those exiles and to comfort them and edify and exhort them. And then you had Jeremiah who stayed back and was prophesying there in Judah and Jerusalem. So it's interesting that Daniel in this chapter nine, we're going to read references Jeremiah's scroll and get some juicy information out of that, which I'm not going to tell you. And, um, and that's it. And then we're going to get into the last section tomorrow, which is Daniel's third vision. And as always the message of hope, which is in every single one of the, the major prophets, there's always that, Ray of hope, right? Okay, so let's get busy reading here. Daniel 7, 1, Daniel's vision of the four beasts. And I hope that little overview helps um, give you a framework for reading because it really helps me a lot. I like to have an overview of anything. When I'm traveling, I like to see the map, you know, and know where we're going. So it just suits my, my way of thinking. Daniel 7, verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head. This is that awkward wording again of the World English Bible. Daniel had a dream and visions of his head on his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spoke and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the sky broke out on the great sea. Four great animals came up from the sea, different from one another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I watched it until its wings were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet as a man. A man's heart was given to it. Behold, there was another animal, a second like a bear. It was raised up on one side and three ribs were in its mouth between its teeth. 
They said this to it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I saw and behold another, like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. The animal also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw the night visions, and behold, there was a fourth animal, awesome and powerful, and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth. It devoured and broke in pieces, and stamped the residue with its feet. It was different from all the animals that were before it. It had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another horn, a little one, before which three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. The Ancient of Days and the Son of Man Verse 9 I watched until thrones were placed, and one who was Ancient of Days sat. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came out from before him. Thousands of thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set. The books were open. I watched at that time because of the voice of the great words which the horn spoke. I watched even until the animal was slain and its body destroyed and it was given to be burned with fire. As for the rest of the animals, their dominion was taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions and behold there came with the clouds of the sky one like the son of man. And he came even to the ancient of days, and they brought near, they brought him near before him. Dominion was given him, and glory, and a kingdom, that all the people's nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which will not pass away, and his kingdom one that which will not be destroyed. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was grieved within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near to one of those who stood by and asked him the truth concerning this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great animals, which are four, are four kings who will arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High will receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Praise God. That's a good place to shout. Then I desire to know the truth concerning the fourth animal, which was different from all of them, exceedingly terrible, whose teeth were of iron and its nails of bronze, which devoured, broke in pieces, and stamped the residue with its feet, and concerning the ten horns that were on its head, and the other horn which came up, and which before and before which three fell, even that horn that had eyes, and a mouth that spoke great things, which look whose look was more stout than its fellows, I saw in the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them, until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Woohoo! Okay. So he said, the fourth animal will be a fourth kingdom on earth, which will be different from all the kingdoms, and will devour the earth, and will tread it down and break in pieces. And if some of this doesn't sink in right away, if it's new to you, just listen to the video over a few times. I do that. For instance, right now, because we're doing Daniel, a lot of times I'll just start at the beginning at Daniel 1 on the playlist, which you can find on my channel. I'll just start on that Daniel playlist and play it over a few times. It's a very convenient way to do it. It takes a while. Um, just takes a while for all the puzzle pieces to come together. All right, verse 24. As for the ten horns, ten kings will arise out of this kingdom. Another will arise after them, and he will be different from the former, and he will put down three kings. He will speak words against the Most High and will wear out the saints of the Most High. He will plan to change the times and the law. And they will be given into his hand until a time and time and half a time. But the judgment will be set and they will take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it to the end. The kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole sky will be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions will serve and obey him. Here is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts troubled me greatly and my face was changed in me but I kept the matter in my heart. The vision of a ram and a goat. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared to me, even to me, Daniel, after that which appeared to me at first. I saw the vision. Now it was so that when I saw, I was in the citadel of Susa, which is the province of Elam. I saw in the vision, and I was by the river Eulai. Then I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, 
there stood before the river a ram which had two horns. The two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward, northward, and southward. No animals could stand before him. There wasn't anyone who could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and magnified himself. As I was considering, behold, a male goat came from the west over the surface of the whole earth and didn't touch the ground. The goat had a notable horn between his eyes. He came to the ram that had two horns, which I saw standing before the river, and ran on him in the fury of his power. I saw him come close to the ram, and he was moved with anger against him, and struck the ram, and broke his two horns. There was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground and trampled on him. There was no one who could deliver the ram out of his hand. The male goat magnified himself exceedingly. When he was strong, the great horn was broken, and instead of it there came up four notable horns toward the four winds of the sky. The little horn. Out of one of them came a little horn, which grew exceedingly great toward the south and toward the east and toward the glorious land. It grew great even to the army of the sky, and it cast down some of the army and to the stars to the ground and trampled on them. Yes, it magnified itself even to the prince of the army, and it took away from him the continual burnt offering, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. The army was given over to it together with the continual burnt offering through disobedience. Oh, that's interesting. Continual burnt offering of disobedience. It cast down truth to the ground, and it did its pleasure and prospered. Then I heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one. You know, that's what the enemy is always trying to do, right? Cast truth to the ground. Cast truth to the ground. That's something to meditate on today. Truth lies fallen in the street. The Lord told me truth must be spoken, or else lies will fill the earth. So interesting. So I'm going to read that again. It says, it was cast, no, it cast down truth to the ground, and it did its pleasure and prospered. Then I heard a holy one speaking. I'm trying to notate that. I love that. It cast truth to the ground. Verse 13. Then I heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one said to that certain one who spoke, How long will the vision about the continual burnt offering and the disobedience that makes desolate to give both the sanctuary and the army to be trodden underfoot, be. He said to me, 2,300 evenings and mornings. Then the sanctuary will be cleansed. Interpretation of the vision. Verse 15. When I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision, I sought to understand it. Then behold, there stood before me something like the appearance of a man. I heard a man's voice between the banks of the Uli, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was frightened and fell on my face. But he said to me, Understand, son of man, for the vision belongs to the time of the end. Now as he was speaking with me, I fell into a deep sleep with my face toward the ground, but he touched me and set me upright. He said, Behold, I will make you know what will be in the latter time of the indignation, for it belongs to the appointed time of the end. The ram which you saw that had the two horns, they are the kings of Media and Persia. The rough male goat is the king of Greece. The great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. As for that which was broken in the place where four stood up, four kingdoms will stand up out of the nation, but not with his power. In the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have come to the full, a king of fierce face and understanding dark sentences will stand up. His power, I'm going to have to look up what understanding dark sentences is. Somebody put that in the comments if you know. I think I'm just going to look in the other versions and see how it was translated. Verse 24. His power will be mighty, but not by his own power. He will destroy awesomely and will prosper in what he does. He will destroy the mighty ones and the holy people. Now, obviously, if it's not by his own power and it's destructive power, it's going to be some kind of evil force, right? Am I right? It makes sense to me. Verse 25, through his policy, he will cause deceit to prosper in his hand. There's a lack of truth again. He's going to cause deceit to prosper. And what does the Bible say? Satan is the, the father of lies, right? A liar and the father of lies. He will magnify himself in his heart, and he will destroy many in their security. He will also stand up against the prince of princes, but he will be broken without hand. The vision of the evenings and the mornings which had been told is true. But seal up the vision, for it belongs to many days to come. 
The vision of the evenings and the mornings. Oops, I just said that. Verse 27. I, Daniel, fainted and was sick for some days. Then I rose up and did the king's business. I wondered at the vision, but no one understood it. Daniel's prayer. In the first year of Darius, son of Ahasuerus, Ahas, Ahasuerus, of the offspring of the Medes, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. Now, see, I don't know if you heard the other day, I was talking about how sometimes they use different words. Like when we were in Ezekiel, they would refer to the Babylonians, then they referred to the Chaldeans, and they referred to Nebuchadnezzar, which was really all the same thing, because I believe it, it went like the Babylonians invaded the Chaldeans. And Nebuchadnezzar was her king. So um, it wasn't exactly the same thing to say Babylonian or Chaldean, but it kind of was because they're in that same land, if, if I have that correct. And see, that's what's happening here. And in Daniel, it says, um, in the first year of Darius, son of Ahasuerus, of the offspring of the Medes, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. So see, we're still in that same realm of the Chaldeans, but now instead of Babylon being the empire, with King Nebuchadnezzar, we now have Darius as king of the Medes. So it's the Medio Persian Empire with Darius as king in the realm of the Chaldeans. So see, but until you know that, they keep switching these names around, it can be kind of confusing. Verse 2. This is the last chapter now. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years about which Yahweh's word came to Jeremiah the prophet. For the accomplishing of the desolations of Jerusalem. So now this is, he's going to understand how long they're going to be in exile now. Because you can imagine that, for one thing, the prophets were telling them Jerusalem was going to be invaded and they really didn't believe them. I'm sure they told themselves, that'll never happen here. It's Jerusalem, God's temple's here. He saved us from the Red Sea, you know, from Egypt. And this is our great God. And he built the temple and it's never going to be destroyed. Kind of like we are in America, right? We think nothing can come against us sometimes. Um, but the prophets were telling them it was going to be invaded and destroyed. So I'm sure they were all in shock and denial when it happened. And then they probably told themselves, well, we'll be going back soon. The Lord's going to get us out of this, you know, when really God had already decreed these 70 years for them, for the exile. So that's what's saying here. When Daniel opens up the book of Jeremiah, he starts understanding more. So let me read that last sentence again. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of years about which Yahweh's word came to Jeremiah the prophet for the accomplishing of the desolation of Jerusalem, even 70 years. I set my face to the Lord God to seek by prayer and petition with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. See, so sometimes there's a time to seek God with sackcloth and, sackcloth and ashes and fasting, and there's a time to celebrate, right? <clears throat> There's a time to say, you know, um, well, I'll stop with that. Verse 4, I prayed to Yahweh my God and made confession and said. So here's another prayer. I love the prayers of the Bible. So here's a prayer by, by a, a written out prayer by Daniel. O Lord, the great and dreadful God, who keeps covenant and loving kindness with those who love him and keep his commandments. We have sinned and have dealt perversely and have done wickedly and have rebelled, even turning aside from your precepts and your ordinances. This is a prayer every buddy in the U.S. needs to be praying right now, all in the world, really. And that is, we have sinned and dealt perversely, done wickedly, and rebelled, even turning aside from your precepts and your ordinances. As a country, as a country, we've done that. Verse 6, we haven't listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, our fathers, and to all the people of the land. Lord, righteousness belongs to you, but to us, confusion of face. As it is today, to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to all Israel who are near and who are far off, through all the countries where you have driven them, because of their trespasses that they have trespassed against you. Lord, to us belongs confusion of face, to our kings, to our princes, to our fathers, because we have sinned against you. I think about it, this is what, like a 2,500-year-old manuscript? We get to take a little fly-on-the-wall view of what Daniel was doing. So cool. So cool. Verse 9, to the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him. We haven't obeyed Yahweh our God's voice to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yes, all Israel have transgressed your law, turning aside that they should not obey your voice. Therefore, the curse and the oath written in the law of Moses, a servant of God, has been poured out on us, for we have sinned against him. 
He has confirmed his words, which he spoke against us and against our judges who judged us by bringing on us a great evil. For under the whole sky, such has not been done as has been done to Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come on us. Yet we have not entreated the favor of Yahweh our God, that we should turn from our iniquities and have discernment in your truth. There's that word again. Discernment in your truth. Truth. Therefore, Yahweh has watched over the evil and brought it on us. For Yahweh your God is righteous in all his works, which he does, for we have not obeyed his voice. Now, Lord God, who has brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and have gotten yourself renowned? As it is today, we have sinned. So it's occurring to me, I just want to say these thoughts while they come to me. It's occurring to me that, you know, Israel was a city on a hill, right? So everybody watched them and it, so many times they displayed God's magnificent power so that everyone knew their God was God. And the Bible says, you know, who's much is given, to whom much is given, much is expected. And so here, when they turned away, when they made God a mockery, you know, by their behavior, and when they dishonored God and did not display his glory, it came back on him. It was like a reciprocal, right? A reverse image. Instead of being that shining city on a hill, they were a shame and a disgrace to the nations. But even in that, people could see God, God's hand moving in it. And they said things like, look what God has done with his people. Look what the God of the Hebrews has done with his people. It's so interesting. Verse, uh, where did I leave off? Now, Lord, our God, who has brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and have gotten yourself renowned as it is today, we have sinned. We have done wickedly. Lord, according to all your righteousness, please let your anger and your wrath be turned away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain, because of your sins and from the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem, and your people have become a reproach to all who are around us. Now, therefore, our God, listen to the prayer of your servant and to his petitions and cause your faith to shine on the sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. My God, turn your ear and hear, open your eyes and see our desolations and the city which is called by your name. For we do not present our petitions before you, our righteousness, but for your great mercy's sake. I think I read that wrong. It says, we do not present our petitions before you for our righteousness, but for your great mercy's sake. Lord, hear. Lord, forgive. Lord, listen and do. Don't defer for your own sake, my God, because your city and your people are called by your name. That just goes with what I just said. All right, last section. The 70 weeks of years. While I was speaking, praying, confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before Yahweh my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening offering. He instructed me and talked with me and said, Daniel, I have now come to give you wisdom and understanding. At the beginning of your petitions, the commandment went out, and I have come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision. Seventy weeks are decreed on your people and on your holy city to finish disobedience and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and discern that from the going out of this com the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem to the anointed one, the prince, to the anointed one, the prince, will be seven weeks and 62 weeks. It will be built again with street and moat, even in troubled times. After the 62 weeks, the anointed one will be cut off and will have nothing and will have nothing. The people of the prince who come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. It will end. I'm sorry. Its end will be a flood and war will be even to the end. Desolations are determined. He will make a firm covenant for many for one week. In the middle of the week, he will cause the sacrifice and the offering to cease. On the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate, and even to the full end, and that determined, and that determined, wrath will be poured out on the desolate. That is the end of Daniel seven through nine. And um, wow, my head's kind of spinning from some of that. That was power packed. Feel free to comment, give me your thoughts and input, any information you want to add, any little tidbits of interest. There is a link in the comments. An affiliate link if you want to get your own copy of the uh, World English Bible. I am loving mine. I said the other day, be sure to get the soft copy cover. I think there's problems with the hard cover. And that's it for today. Until next time, God bless you. Thanks for joining.